What are the actual steps that you need to take to get your book on the shelves at a local bookstore? Well, today I'm going to be sharing my experience and the tips that I have to make that happen for your book. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher, and I'm here to share my insights on all things self-publishing with you. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see the videos that I put out every week on self-publishing and how to make a career out of being an author. As an author, many of us dream of the day that we walk into a bookstore and see our book on the shelves. For those who have long harbored this dream, it's the epitome of, wow, I've made it. Now, in today's world, you can walk into a bookstore with a copy of your book, put it on the shelf, snap a photo, and walk away, post it on Instagram, and say, well, I saw my book on a bookshelf. Believe me, I've done that once or twice. That makes for a really great photo on social media, um, but it doesn't really count, right? I mean, you, went, you saw your book on the shelf, but it wasn't really available for sale on the shelf. So as an independent author, how do you actually get a bookstore to carry your book? I've heard of people actually going into bookstores, leaving a copy of their book on the shelves, pretty much donating their book to the store in the hopes that when somebody picks it up and takes it to the register, that the cashier will be so perplexed and think, wow, we've got to order this book to keep it in stock. Um, if this has actually worked for somebody, please let me know. I would love to hear from you because I'm guessing that person was like, it's not in our system but we'll take your money, bye. Like, <laughs> they're not gonna think on it that long. I've talked before about getting your book into libraries, but today I'm gonna be talking about getting into the local bookstore. And I'm able to do this because I recently accomplished this, which is very exciting. So The Infinite Infinite is on the shelves at a local bookstore right here in Florida. I am so excited, and now I can tell you all the things that worked and didn't work. So the first thing that you need to do to get a local bookstore to carry your book is that your book needs to be printed by somebody other than Amazon. Bookstores and retail in general are dying because of Amazon. They're crushing their business. Amazon has fundamentally changed how so many industries work now, right? Like they're a huge competitor and your brick and mortar bookstore has not been immune to that. And it's not just the self-published books that are coming out of KDP that are impacting brick and mortar stores. Brick and mortar bookstores aren't buying anything published by Amazon, even if it's through the traditional arm. They just don't want to support this company that is crushing them. And why? Because people go into the local bookstore, look at the price, look it up on Amazon, and click order because they can get free shipping. Like, it's a problem. It's good for so many people. There's good and bad on either side. But effectively, if your book is printed by Amazon, bookstores do not want to touch it. They are not going for it. So that means your paperback or your hardback needs to be printed by somebody else. Now, Amazon doesn't even print hardback, so that's another thing. But your paperback needs to come from somebody other than Amazon. And for that, you could use a service like Ingram Spark, which I've done. And that's how I was able to complete that first step. So, number one, book not printed by Amazon, it's printed by Ingram Spark. Awesome. Number two is you need your own barcode and you need your own ISBN. You always need your own ISBN. I'm always going to throw that in there but you need to have your barcode with the price on it. The bookstore owner or manager wants to know what you wanna charge for the book because they don't have time to sit around and figure it out for you and they also want it to just be on there. They're gonna program it into their system, but if there's ever an issue when the person goes to buy it, they can just look on the back of the book and say, nope, it says $11.99 right here, it's $11.99, unless they wanna put it on discount, so they wanna see that. When I walked into the bookstore that eventually agreed to stock my book, the owner picked it up looked on the back and said, oh, that's a good price. So that was very validating to know that I did the right thing. He was impressed and appreciative that I had the price listed on there. So that's the second thing, you need to have that barcode. The third is you need to price your book to sell. So this bookstore is literally fighting with low cost and free delivery from Amazon. You should have already done your homework and pricing research before you publish the book, but it is especially important if you're trying to get your book into local brick and mortar stores because they want to offer a competitive price as well. You need to know the comps in your genre, otherwise it will never move off the bookshelf. Four, okay, you need to understand why consignment is good. For the local bookstore that I spoke to before I settled on the shop that's now carrying the book, I heard from most that they wanted to work on consignment with local authors. So that means that I'm gonna go in with my book, they're gonna put it on the shelves, and only when somebody purchases it do either of us make a cut. So that is because these local bookstores don't want to take a risky investment, right? They don't know if anybody's going to buy your book. They don't know if anybody wants it. And so for them to even buy one book from you, okay, well, that's margin that they don't really have. So 
when they sell it on consignment, that means everybody wins when the books are sold. Now, if you have to continue to go in often to drop off new books, then they're probably gonna say, hey, all right, I'll order a carton, we'll make a big thing out of it because clearly you're a commodity, people want your book. Um, but it gives them a chance to test the waters, still support local authors, still give you a chance, um, but they're not taking on the risk. So that's really beneficial to all parties in this case. It's definitely more manual, so find a bookstore that you don't mind driving to a couple times, um, but you definitely want to be able to sell on consignment. Okay, so the fifth thing you need to do is pound some pavement. Now this can be in person or digitally, but you need to go out and do the research. In order for me to even find the store that I ended up partnering with, I did a lot of research online. I searched for Tampa bookstores, St. Pete bookstores, St. Pete Florida bookstores, Clearwater bookstores. You get the idea. The stores that showed up on the first page that were not a chain were the ones that I reached out to. Again, the big chains, they have a big procurement system, whereas with the local bookstores, I knew I could talk with the owner and have that conversation. Now, some of these stores had no way to contact them. I crossed them off the list. Some of these stores had a way to contact them but never got back to me. Crossed them off the list. So it was really easy to whittle the list down pretty quickly. It's not to say that they wouldn't have been good partners to work with, but if others can't get to them, if others can't get in touch with them, how many customers are probably coming in? So that was definitely an indicator to me that I didn't want to maybe work with those. So the next one is you want to pick the right partner. So after I had two local stores on my list, after I'd whittled everything down, I'd done everything right, I looked at my calendar and found a day that I would be able to already be out and about to go and drop off the books. Both owners asked that I reach back out to them before I came in to make sure that they would be there. So the first got back right away and was like, yep, you're still good. I'll be here from these hours. All right, that one was set. The second one, I had spoken to this person only a few weeks earlier and they said they were happy to sell my books on consignment. I picked up the phone the day that I was going to double check, started to talk to them and they just started ranting about how business was suffering and no one would ever stock my book, not even libraries, which is ironic because my book is in libraries. Um, and I can certainly empathize with their struggles, but it was one of those things where I was like, huge red flag. I don't want to work with somebody who's going to be prone to having these mood swings because what if I need to get my compensation from the consignment sale. Like all those things, I was like, no, I'm crossing them off the list. Like I had a bad vibe, get out of there. So you want to pick the right partner. You know, if you're doing all your research and there's only one store and you don't get a good vibe from them, don't deal with them. It's not worth the effort for you to potentially partner with somebody to sell your book that isn't actually going to be advocating for your book or who's going to be ranting because other things aren't working for them. So the, the shop that I did end up going with has been a great partner so far. The owner was super helpful, super nice. It turns out we used to actually live in the same apartment complex, though at different times. So that's just kind of the wonders of local bookstores. You meet somebody who's local, they know the community. Now I have this good relationship with this store and hopefully I can continue to support them as they are supporting my books. So out of all that work, out of all that research, one local store is now stocking the infinite infinite, which is really, really exciting. So I've already gone a bit longer on this video than I usually like to do. I do like to keep it short for you, but I want to put a message out there to local bookstore owners who may be watching this. So during my search, I found several like new hip local bookstores in downtown St. Pete, which is a very like trendy place. Um, it's a very cool city, has a good artist vibe. So you would think, okay, well, they appreciate independent arts. They appreciate independent authors. These bookstores that I found were all about having local coffee sourced from the coffee roaster down the street and only serving food from local restaurants and selling, you know, mugs and other goods from other local businesses. They really wanted money to stay within the local economy. I was very optimistic about approaching them to say, like, what's your local author programming? Didn't even ask about selling a book, just said, what's the programming? Because maybe I can go to an event and meet other local authors, you know, that'd be kind of nice. In addition to maybe having my book stock there, like, it would have just been a win to have that community, right? But no, so they would only serve locally brewed coffee, only sell from other local shops, but they only wanted to work with traditional publishers who were putting books out on a national tour from out of town. The irony, like, is such a facepalm. Like, if you want to support local business, support local authors. Okay, mini rant over. But in general, I love the local bookstore that I am working with because they do support local authors. If you have had luck getting your book onto local bookshelves, please let me know. Drop a note down in the comments. And for those of you in the greater Tampa St. Pete area, go check out Back in the Day Books on Main Street in Dunedin. They're stocking my books. It's a super cute little bookstore. Um, it's right there on Main Street, so there's lots of cool shops all around. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. That lets YouTube know that you're getting value from this and my other videos and you want to be here every week as I release new content. Hope you have a great rest of your day and now you can go back to writing your book.